Nick here with tinywoodstove.com and I'm standing inside of our home which is a 2000 and something uh, RV. It's a fifth wheel and um, we're getting ready to install <clears throat> our Dwarf 4 kilowatt stove. So we're going to do a just a real quick install video, tools you need, uh, the, the parts, our install kit, RV install kit, and then how to properly vent it through the roof. So let's get started. So this is where the stove is going. Um, before we kind of remodeled, this was a entertainment center. So it had several shelves and like a TV and like a uh, sound stuff. Uh, so we ripped that all out and then we put a little uh, uh, hearth. It's kind of a pre-manufactured pre kind of a heat shield thing. So it has uh, um, some thin, thin metal and then it has some insulation, some ceramic insulation under that. And then um, we put in just kind of some uh, some shiplap. My wife really likes the look of that. And we put in some kind of barn wood trim. And then instead of heat shielding the sides and the back, we installed a heat shield on the stove. So we're about an inch, um, that's like seven eighths off the stove there. So we have kind of that air wash that happens. And then same with the uh, the single wall pipe, we have a, uh, a heat shield off the back so that we can keep the aesthetic of the surround and not have, you know, metal surrounding that. So when we were shopping for a fifth wheel, um, we really wanted a bunk room. And we found this at an auction. A friend is a, is a dealer, so we went to a dealer auction. And we found this, which was super clean, and it was a, a screaming deal, but it only had the bedroom in the front. So... Um, we turn that into the kids room and then uh, this pulls out into uh, a queen bed roughly and then we have a little foam topper that we put on it. It's a comfortable bed. So this is where we sleep and then the kids are <clears throat> in what would be the, uh, the master bedroom in there in their little box. So I can do a full tour video of, of the space later when it's, um, it's a little more picked up. Um, otherwise my wife would kill me. So let's get back to the install. So we got our heat shield ready to go. So the uh, the first step is, is we're going to mark where the holes for the mounting are going to go. And basically I just break off a little pencil and sharpen it, put it through the, um, uh, the little holes. Those are the stock levelers. You pull those out and then just kind of mark and then you'll screw and then bolt that. And then before we move it though, after we mark it, we'll mark the center of, of this hole so that we can, we can uh, cut our, our penetration hole. All right, so the tools you'll need, I have uh, my jigsaw, a drill, tape measure, I have a little marking device. I got the, uh, the bolts there to secure that to the, to the um, little platform it's on. Then I got two sizes of screw. One screw, set of screws is for the uh, silicone pipe boot, and the other is to secure the roof support bracket, which is right there. We'll talk about parts in just a second. And then I have for, on the roof, my roof is a, uh, is a, a, like a vinyl sheet. So I'm going to use this uh, Dicor lap sealant over the top of the silicone pipe boot and then underneath the silicone I'm going to just use some silicone um, underneath the boot and then use that kind of around the side and over all the screws and stuff. Um, so yeah this is basically you know the tools you'll need um, at least for our setup. Let's check out the parts. Yeah. Okay so this is basically our stock RV roof kit and then we're just adding on an additional uh, 20 inch piece so <clears throat> this insulated piece will be split between so if our roof is you know three or four inches it'll be split between the top half and the bottom half and then we'll use the uh, the roof support bracket which will go on the underside we'll secure it this will fit inside the clearance hole that goes under there then we got clamps then the single to double adapter. So this drops down to single wall to connect to our stove. And you saw our, our, our pipe inside. This is basically gonna come down to, to that pipe. And then we have the, uh, uh, the roof vent and then the trim, uh, the trim plate, which just goes around, um, goes around the insulator. So that's, that's the parts. All right, here's my, my hardware. We pulled out the levelers and then I got my drill bit. I'm gonna be oversight. This is quarter, quarter inch hardware and I'm gonna be oversizing the hole a little bit so that I have a little bit of margin so I don't have to like line it up 
precisely. And um, this is quite a bit smaller than than the hole that's that's already in the box. Right, so I got my pencil ready. I just grabbed one of my daughter's pencils, snapped it, and then I needed to shave it down a little bit to fit it through the, the hole. Do a nice little little wiggle there, try to make sure it's vertical. So my level uh, is too big to put in there. I just wanted to get this lined up with the stove so aesthetically it's not all cockeyed. <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily matter to be perfectly plumb with the ground or... Um, so I'm just going to use my big friendly square and I'm just going to kind of get it close enough and then I'm going to mark my, uh, my hole in, in the roof there. So I was standing up on the ladder trying to get my line from my pipe to the roof there. And then I remembered, I think a customer told me they just uh, took, a, <laughs> took a, a flashlight. Oh, it's only two. And then uh, I'll just trace that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna drill my holes, but first I'm gonna remove my, my wife's essential oils. We got our hole there with our compass. So we're going to cut off the uh, the rubber roof, so we're not <clears throat> running into that with the blade and getting it to tear past where we want it. Okay, we've we've got our our hole through the top, and we hit just perfectly this cross member. We were thinking that we were going to maybe come up higher but the it looks like these cross members there's another one here there's another one there so it looks like they're every four inches so we're gonna hack uh, we're gonna hack off this one and then we're gonna bridge it with some angle notch out some angle steel and then just self tapping screws and secure it just to kind of uh, to secure that a little bit more okay here are the ribs every four inches at least in this area of the roof so we got some uh, angle that we're just going to put in there and then screw it and then we'll cut out that middle middle rib. Okay, cut the hole in the roof. You can see our little support thing. I still need to cut out that cross member. And the roofing material was just really, it was almost like cardboard with this carpet on it. <clears throat> so I just used a razor blade and cut that. Okay, I got the uh, that centerpiece bridged, and I'm gonna cut out that centerpiece, then get my bracket in. You can see it down there. It will be a business. Okay, so we got that cut out. It's supported real nicely. Ready to put the bracket in. Okay, I got the bracket in, and the material that is up here is not as thick as I was hoping. So I got big, long, four-inch self-tapping screws, and I went through the thim flimsy material and then <clears throat> drove it into uh, the, the steel tube that was up there. So that bracket is set. And I'm going to put the stove in and get the insulated pipe in. Okay, ran into a couple uh, <clears throat> snags. The um, pipe was just a smidge too long. Um, it was going to be a little too high. The insulated pipe was going to be a little too high above the roof. So I cut down a single wall uh, about three, four inches. So I took out the um, little set screw there which we um, did a little counter, little hole counter sink, and then we, we threaded it. And then I dropped down the roof support bracket. The, um, the little uh, tighten screws there were cinched down, and then I, I drove it, I mounted it, and then when I loosened it, it was, it was not coming out wide enough. It was not opening enough to get the pipe through, so I just dropped it down, threaded the pipe through, and then I'm going to um, secure the bracket and then cinch it down. And then I'll re-drill a little pilot hole through the single wall and then get that set, and then the pipe should be set. Okay, pipe is in. Roof support bracket, got it cinched down. It is rock solid. So now I am ready to go put that set screw back in the uh, uh, single wall pipe through the flue flange just to keep that secure. And then to put the pipe boot on. Okay, ready to put the pipe boot on. I went ahead and um, put the boot on and then traced it out. And then I marked <clears throat> where those little cross members were because I'm gonna hit those on each side and then because the uh, the Luon that's in here is kind of delamming and it's not the greatest so 
we'll have at least have six points that'll really be pulling it down. Then we'll seal the edges good. Okay, I got a bead of silicone around the perimeter, and then I put one on that one of those inner ribs, and then I'll line it up, kind of squish it down, and then get these. Oops, drive these sections first, and then fill in the gaps. And then we'll afterwards we'll use this uh, uh, lap sealant around the edge and over the screws once the silicone dries. Washed away the hen house. The girls pushed the door shut, and then the wave. Hit. 